Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Saturday, July 24th, 2021, and today we'll be talking about the California recall election in which Gavin Newsom in this brand new poll from Emerson College seems to show that Newsom is in a tricky position when it comes to the way that Californians stand on the recall election. Now, this recall effort is set to occur in September 2014th, actually, I thought it was the 21st, 14th, 2021, where millions of voters will go into their ballot boxes and vote whether or not they want to recall Gavin Newsom. Now, quickly speaking, what is a recall election? Essentially, when around 10 to 12 percent of the previous electorate decides that they want to remove someone that was previously elected in office and is currently in office, they can trigger a recall election if that 10 to 12 percent has signatures in which they sign this recall petition. Now, that recall petition is sent to the Secretary of State. They approve every single one of the signatures and then they say, OK, we will set the recall election to occur. If a recall election is successful and there have only been a few times in which recall elections have actually occurred in the United States, once back in the 1920s in the state of North Dakota, then again in the state of Wisconsin, and actually a recall election in California in which 2003, in which the incumbent Democratic governor was recalled and replaced by Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then in 2021, we now have our fourth recall election for a gubernatorial race uh, for the fourth time in United States history. So, in this recall election, if Newsom was to be recalled, there would be a second ballot on the same thing. So essentially, do you want to recall? Yes, no. Assuming that the yes goes through, you would find this list of now confirmed 46 candidates in which you would pick your favorite one. There are many people running in this race, a couple of top names, including Caitlyn Jenner and John Cox, the previous 2018 Republican nominee for governor. Caitlyn Jenner, of course, a celebrity very well known. Um, so you have a large amount of people on this ballot. And essentially the question is, you know, if this recall effort goes through, that person who was ever chosen by a plurality would end up becoming the next governor of the state of California. And this recent poll shows that Gavin Newsom's numbers have seemed to decrease in terms of the amount of people that want to keep him in office. Now, before we get into this, I do want to say that this is a singular poll, but it is our first and only poll from the month of July. So I did want to point it out as this election is quite literally right around the corner. In just two months, we will find out whether or not Gavin Newsom will be keeping his job and whether or not he can run for re-election in 2022 or will probably uh, not probably or what will he be running as an outsider someone who was defeated someone who was kicked out of office now the recall polls haven't been too bad for gavin newsom when you take a look at the ones on real clear politics it seems like it doesn't show the best numbers for gavin newsom but i want to show you to the numbers back in march of 2021 in which Emerson shows that the no do not remove was plus four. The rest of the polls on here from the Public Policy Institute of California, from the, UN the UC Berkeley uh, IGS, from Survey USA, from pollsters again time and time that show double digit advantages for the no do not remove question. The only one that showed single digits was Emerson College back in March of 2021. So I question whether or not this poll is uh, completely right in terms of the way that it has been following the trends in the past, but looking at it, it still doesn't show good numbers for Gavin Newsom. It's not as if Emerson is some type of right wing pollster that is intentionally trying to show Gavin Newsom in a negative light, at the end of the day, it's just poor showing for Gavin Newsom in a singular poll. It doesn't mean that he's doomed. It doesn't show that he's doomed. It doesn't show that he's going to lose, but it does tell him that you aren't as safe as you might think, or you should take this race very seriously. And when you actually take a look at the initial people that supported the Gavin Newsom keep option, essentially those who were opposing the recall, you had senators from outside of the state of California, including Elizabeth Warren, Stacey Abrams, Bernie Sanders, Cory Booker, these people were quick to jump on this anti-recall effort. In fact, Elizabeth Warren, almost immediately after the signature seemed to be A-OK, -okay, came out and said that this is a Republican recall. Now, that is the language that Gavin Newsom is using. And now we are starting to see Gavin Newsom fighting to put the Democrat by his name when that question is asked on the ballot, because voters will be more inclined to vote for a Democrat considering that it is the state of California. Stacey Abrams, Cory Booker, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, top Democratic names that are saying no on recalling uh, Gavin Newsom. You also have President Joe Biden, who has been in opposition to the recall, who has expressed his efforts for Gavin Newsom to remain in this office. You see the California Democratic Party dropping nearly a million dollars on the anti-recall campaign. 
other new big donors to Newsom, including the Netflix CEO, who gave him $3 million. And the reason why he can get these hefty sums from these major donors is because since he's running in a recall election, it's not a traditional type of campaign. So his type of campaign finance rules that would normally apply and did apply in 2018 and will apply in 2022 don't apply in this case. So Opposing the recall effort, you see the Democratic Party, for obvious reasons, members of the Democratic Party, senators from Vermont, New Jersey, what, uh, Massachusetts, and then Georgia, an organizer, Stacey Abrams, a very well-known name. You have President Joe Biden. Now, when asking who is supporting the recall, of course, it's the Republican Party. The RNC, which spent $250,000 to encourage people to sign the recall petition. The California Republican Party, which has donated nearly $200,000. You have the former House Speaker, Newt Gingrich, and former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, $100,000 through their political action committees. Former Facebook executive, you have $1,000 donated. I mean, what's happening in the state of California is that this is ending up being a true race between Democrats and Republicans. Now, when this recall effort first began, it did not start out as an entirely partisan committee. It did not start out as an entirely Republican type of campaign. This was a recall effort that was led primarily by Republicans, but still backed by many Democrats. And when you actually take a look at the polling data, well, you might start to see exactly you know, why it was like that in the past. You can see here that in the early numbers, while the Remington research poll from 2019, which I don't even know why they questioned the potential recall, but in January that the numbers, while still good for Gavin Newsom, occasionally it did flip and flop. You would see here that there was a four point advantage amongst Emerson College, a six point advantage amongst Probolitsky Research, and then amongst likely voters it expanded to, what, uh, a 15 advantage to 18 advantage. You see here that WPA intelligence, they showed an advantage for the yes, remove Gavin Newsom by four points. But now, you know, what has happened was that this recall effort has turned from a lot of voters being at one point nearly 16, 17% undecided to down to just 9%. And it seems that voters are very clear in who they want to support in this recall effort. The Democratic Party intervening and taking this race seriously, I think, is really what made Gavin Newsom in a more favorable position than otherwise. Had he just brushed this off, I could tell you that maybe California would have recalled Gavin Newsom. It certainly would have been difficult, but for him to completely ignore the question itself, to completely ignore the fact that there is this election occurring in September would be uh, potentially a fatal blow to Gavin Newsom's political career. You see, when he was elected back in 2018, he wasn't elected by the same margin as Hillary Clinton. She won by nearly 30 points. And given the circumstances of the year in California, Gavin Newsom didn't have an overwhelmingly impressive result, but he still won by over 20 points. You can't take that away from him. No matter how hard the Republican Party tried, Gavin Newsom was just a shoe in for the gubernatorial election. He was a lieutenant governor. He was rolling over from Jerry Brown. It was very easy to see how he was going to win. And he did win, won by 22 points. Now, John Cox is on that ballot again. He's running as a Republican candidate for the recall effort if it is to follow through. But Gavin Newsom, with that 62% coalition, there will be a lot the GOP will have to do in order to take this man down. In 2020, Joe Biden won the state of California with 64% of the vote. Donald Trump received 34% of the vote. You're talking about a margin of victory of nearly 30 points. So, the overwhelming amount of Democratic support is there, which makes it so much more difficult for this recall effort to go through for the Republican Party. You see, Looking at the amount of people they needed to sign the recall petition was 1.5 million. Well, that seems like a large number. And then you realize that Donald Trump received 6 million votes in the state of California. 53% of Republicans believe that the 2020 election was rigged. And many more of them believe that Gavin Newsom is a bad governor. It was easy to figure out how you could find 1.5 million citizens who want to recall Gavin Newsom. That's not the majority of citizens. That's not even close to coming near the population of the state of California. There is a very large amount of people in the state. So with Joe Biden up 30 points and Donald Trump down, you might expect, oh, it will be hard to find 1.5 million. No, when you take a look at the actual vote count, given that the fact that this is the biggest state, it makes sense that they were able to get 1.5 million people to sign onto this ballot. But all in all, the recall effort itself is largely, I would say, falling off in terms of the way that we are viewing it in competitive nature. 
While this one poll does indicate that Gavin Newsom might be in some type of trouble, he's still ahead with the no, do not remove. And I can tell you now, when you're looking at the yes, remove, no, do not remove, and you add it up, you're asking yourself, okay, where is this remaining percent? Why is it not adding up all the way to 100%? It's missing 9%, right? Well, those are undecided voters. These undecided voters in the state of California almost always go to the Democrats. When you're looking at the voters here who say, I don't have a preference as to who I'm voting for, because it is California, they will almost always lean towards the left. Gavin Newsom in this instance only needs 2% in terms of more support. What the Republicans would need is essentially 7% more. Now, with 39% being the yes remove option, it also doesn't show too much crossover support relative to previous election results. While it might on the presidential level, Donald Trump was particularly unpopular in the state of California, it does not tell us that there is more support for the Republican Party and against Gavin Newsom now than there was in 2018. 38.8% versus 38.1%, the change is very minimal. There is no type of large shift here in terms of the public sentiment on the governor of California. So for Gavin Newsom to be in this position, I'm not going to say that he should be quivering in his boots. This is not that bad for someone who was recalled or is in this recall election. I mean, the fact that this election itself is being triggered is a little alarming, but considering the circumstances that it was under, under COVID-19, when half of this, the half of the, you know, Trump wing of the Republican Party was fully okay with in-person rallies and anti-mask mandates and reopening the schools fully in person, fully opening businesses, etc. You know, while they were fully okay with that, I'm sure they were completely against many of these mask mandates that Gavin Newsom put in place. In fact, now Gavin Newsom is being sued by families for trying to implement a mask mandate in schools in the state of California, even with, you know, everyone under age 12 unvaccinated. You know, when you have these mask mandates in these states, Gavin Newsom is trying to defend it by saying these students are not vaccinated. There are still children dying of COVID-19. All they have to do is wear a mask. But they are, he is being sued by families in the state of California who are trying to say that this is bad for children, that this simply should not be occurring. So given that we were in uh, we are in a global pandemic that there are many restrictions that Gavin Newsom put in place that some Republicans simply might not agree with, I can see how the recall election happened. Had we been in a traditional type of circumstance, it probably wouldn't have happened. There probably wouldn't have been as much support to even say we should waste taxpayer dollars on this recall election. And the thing is that this recall election is happening back to back practically. I mean, in just over a year from this recall election, from the date that people actually vote, you'll be in another general election season in which Gavin Newsom will be faced off against potentially another Republican. There will be a second option to remove Gavin Newsom at that point, which again raises the question, is this just a waste of taxpayer dollars? So my prediction so far is that Gavin Newsom is going to still survive this recall effort. This current rating that it has from inside elections is likely Democrat. I think that's right. While I don't think Gavin Newsom will have a 2018 type of victory in terms of the amount of people that want him to stay in office, it might come close. Gavin Newsom, at the end of the day, is a Democrat in one of the most Democratic states in the entire nation. The main reason why he's being recalled are largely Republican talking points and the fact that he was hypocritical with the French laundry scandal that was months ago, more than months ago. So as it stands now, there isn't much ammunition that the Republican Party can use against Gavin Newsom in order to oust him as the incumbent governor, at least in terms of what resonates with Democrats. While there will be nearly 95, 100% of Republicans that will end, that end up voting that will vote to remove Gavin Newsom, we're still working in a state as liberal as California. That really doesn't mean much if they don't have the majority of the population. And as recent election results show, they barely come close to having a significant portion of the electorate in the state of California. This is like having a Republican governor in a state such as Utah or Wyoming trying to be recalled over issues that aren't necessarily important to Republican voters. If it was an issue that the Democratic Party truly cared about, these numbers would be much higher. These numbers would be higher. It would not average to no, do not remove 50% and yes, remove 39% at this point in time based off the average from Real Clear Politics, which already in itself does lean towards the right, showing the Democrats or the Republicans at the disadvantage. Gavin Newsom, while shouldn't be 
parading around, oh, I've already won, this is going to be a super easy race, should be happy with some of these numbers, especially if we are starting to see articles questioning whether or not Gavin Newsom is now vulnerable all of a sudden because of one poll. If it's just one poll that shows him and the no do not remove plus five, when back in March it showed it plus four, when there were two other polls around the same time period that were plus 11, plus 16 from different pollsters, I question whether or not Emerson is the best and most accurate source in the state of California. But I will still recognize them as a major pollster, and I'm not going to simply ignore their poll because I don't think it matches what I expected to see in the recall election numbers. But I'm not going to take it to heart enough to say that this is all of a sudden uh, an opportunity for the Republican Party. We don't see any major coalitions behind any Republicans. This is going to be largely an ineffective vote that won't have a major outcome unless something major changes about this race. But so far, Gavin Newsom is on track to survive his recall election and even this brand new poll, which the media seems to be eating up. And while they should cover it, it isn't enough to say at this point that Californians are split on Gavin Newsom. They have had a very clear point throughout all of the polls so far that they want Gavin Newsom to remain as their governor and it is very likely that he does remain as their governor by the end of the year. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already, and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch, and then a playlist for my 2021 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow.